Okay, so we're going to talk about Rich Films, his episodes, his reports for KTLA on an iPhone. Rich, tell everybody about that. Well, just to be clear, we use an iPhone sometimes, not all of the time. And so we have been using it more and more because quite honestly, it's so easy. It's so compact. And we have the choice of wide angle lenses that make life a lot easier. So we don't use it all the time. We still use a standard uh, DSLR cam for our shoots. That's like the standard. But my photographer and I will just come together and say, hey, do you want to use the iPhone for this one? If we're in the back of a car, if we're in a dynamic situation, if we want to get really close up to things, uh, the iPhone has proven to be so easy and so simple. Um, do you want me to just go through and show you how we do it with our equipment? Yeah, do that. Okay. All right. So we start with this, an iPhone. <laughs> Very easy. So this is the iPhone that we use and we put it in this. And this is, uh, if you remember the company Jefferson, Clip. this is their little Clip grip. And so this was a $50 attachment. And what I love about this is that it's really easy to hold and it also flexes into different mounting. So you can have it like this. And it's just, it just makes the iPhone a lot easier to hold and grip and maneuver. And so we do use that. If you notice, we use a, a different grip at the top. It's called the Joby. And so that just attaches on the, uh, the, the little screw area here. So we just screw that on and that's it. So there's the, the phone setup. Now, when it comes to microphones, we use a couple of things. We use these, let me grab, this is the uh, receiver. So this is the Rode Wireless 2 Go. And so this is the receiver, and this actually clips onto the top of the camera. And then it connects to the camera like this. I know this is very compelling television, uh, but this just plugs right in here. So you plug it into the lightning port and then you plug this into here. And what you've got here now is the receiver and then you have the mic transponder. So this is the transponder that you clip onto the person that you're interviewing. So you can clip this on right here like that. Well, maybe a little bit higher so you can see it. There you go. So like that. Now that's, that's pretty ugly. So we don't actually do that. We will either hide this or there is a cable that you could put a lav attachment onto that. So that's how we'll do that. But what's neat about these Rode uh, wireless mics is that they record in two ways. So they record into themselves and then it also sends the audio direct into the file. So you've got embedded audio and if there's a problem like we've had in the past where the audio didn't record, you can then retrieve the audio from these. So it's kind of a one-two punch. And these are fantastic. We have really had minimal problems with them and they're just so great. Now, the second part of that is this. Okay. So Rode makes a stick mic. And so that same little microphone that I showed you that clips right here, slides into this little attachment here. And now you have a stick mic, which obviously looks kind of weird if you're using it like that. So we do that and we put that on top. But as you can see, it's got the Rode branding, which of course we don't want to show on TV because Rode is not sponsoring us. So we pop that off and we pop this little bad boy on from Sweetwater that Jefferson, you uh, clued me into. And although it doesn't fit perfectly, if you look at it from the side, it's kind of squished and weird looking, but on TV, it looks just fine. You would never notice that it's more oblong than it is wide. And that's how we interview people. And this thing works in every situation you could ever imagine. It is so clear. It gets the audio. It is amazing. And then by the way, we slip this on when we really want to brand things up. And now we've got Rich on Tech for both TV and the radio show. It's and we should just mention that people, uh, when you're out there doing stories, you'd like to have a stick mic because otherwise you're just sticking mics on people all the time and it gets awkward, right? You know, um, we use a combination of both. Sometimes we, if we're doing like a longer form interview, we will definitely use the, the lavalier mic. But if we're doing a run and gun situation where we're at some sort of expo or it's loud, uh, this works really well because you can get it right up close to their face and make sure you get that great audio. And it's very easy to just put into people's faces and not have to do a lot of legwork to get that attached and, and clipped onto their you know, lapel. 
Okay. So it's just that it's your it's your um, your Joby little handheld thing and your mics. That's it. No no that, gimbal. No, right. we never use a gimbal. Uh, I I actually am not a fan of gimbals. I think that they're more work than they're worth. Um, I have been around the world with this setup. We have shot in so many different locations and situations, and it seems to work. The iPhone has extremely good stabilization built in. It is perfect. Um, so we have not used a gimbal. We don't need it. Uh, I think that it just adds another layer of complexity to the situation that we don't really need. Now, uh, once we've got the video, well, let me show you one more thing that we use. So this is what we used to use. We no longer use this because there's almost never a reason for it. But this is our task cam. And so this is a microphone, very similar to what I was showing you, except um, it just records into itself. So there's a little SD card into this guy and it records into itself. Now the nice part about this is that, um, well, the, the downside is that you have to sync up the audio later. So when you're recording, you can record with your phone and then you can have this as the mic. You can do this anywhere without any setup. So nothing needs to be attached to your phone. And then what you do is you take the video from here, you take the audio from here, and then you use Final Cut or another video program to sync them up. And the nice part about this, and I'll have a, a card here, but the nice part about this is that it uses a card. So it's very easy to just pop this card out, hand it to your photographer, or your, you know, pop it into your computer and edit that way. Whereas with these guys, um, you do have to connect them with a USB-C cable. So I always keep one of those as well. So you connect that to your computer using this. Yeah, so. but when you do it on the road, you don't know that you recorded. You, you, you hope that you recorded. You don't know if you have enough room. There's no messaging to tell you you're out of room. That's why what you're doing on the card is a good save. Yes, exactly. So you always want, um, you always want two of whatever you're doing because you never know with these new setups, you're not really monitoring the audio like the old days. I mean, you could, but it's, it, you know, you're just not doing it as much as you used to. So that's that. Um, and then of course we have like one of these little things. I always keep this with a bunch of different cards on it. I picked this up in Japan. I actually picked up two of these. I gave one to my photographer and I'm not kidding. Love the guy. He lost it before he even put it away in his backpack. I don't know. We, to this day, laugh about it because I, I handed it to him. I said, Luis, here you go. I got you one. And by the time he put it in his pocket, somehow it disappeared. So I only have this one and it really is great. But there's a mystery of somewhere in Japan, there's one of these laying around on the floor. Uh, the other thing that we'd use is this. So uh, what happens is at the end of the shoot, you want to give all the video to your photographer. So it's all trapped on this phone right here. So there's a couple things you can do. First off, you can use this little device. So this is a mic, this is a uh, SD card reader that connects to Lightning. So you can plug that into the iPhone and then transfer all of the video that you just captured onto the SD card and then hand it to your photographer. And then they can go and edit it. Um, the transfer rate is extremely slow from the iPhone via Lightning to the SD card. So that is not the best option. The other option is that you can airdrop the video from the phone to a computer and then transfer it to this little USB-C drive. Uh, this is a PNY one that I really like. It's 128 gigabytes. It's got USB-C on one side and uh, USB, or sorry, it's got USB on one side, I believe that's USB-A if they call it that, and then USB-C on this side. So you can plug this into your computer either way, no matter which uh, type of USB slot you have. That also supports an Android phone, so if you wanna transfer things to Android. I know, are we getting in the weeds here? You asked how we do this stuff on the road, Jefferson. You asked the question, I'm telling you. I airdrop everything. I just, uh, that's that's my method. I just, uh, I, I, you know, it's just, but that, we that's can, the way I like to do it. We can, you know, we can shoot six gigs in a, in a, you know, in a shoot for our, you know, segment. So it could be a lot. But AirDrop, AirDrop is usually pretty good. It's usually very reliable. It could just take a while. And sometimes, you know, AirDrop doesn't give you the best like indicator of what's happening. It's kind of like a little circle that's filling, and it's not like you can see exactly what's happening. I guess on the on the receiving side, you can. And Yellow Production says that's a neat thumb drive. Yes, I agree. And we put it on a nice keychain we got at the electric uh, 
expo because you know these things can really easily find their way 